Greetings. Welcome to the LA Dodge Report podcast. This is Scott Andes with Oscar Martinez. Hey, Oscar, how you doing? Hey, Scott. Hi. And hello, everybody out there in uh, YouTube and uh, Twitter and who knows what other land that you'll be watching this on or listening to us on. So, hi, everyone. So this is something that our readers have probably never seen before. Uh, my face, I know. Maybe you've seen probably your face in your uh, profile picture on the site. Okay, so here's a treat for everybody out there. My beautiful face. Mm-hmm. There you go. And I, I think uh, you'll be happy to know, Scott, that you've got the big portion of the picture. I'm in a little tiny square, so hopefully that helps me out a bit. <laughs> right, right. That's what everybody needs, a big picture of my face. Um, so it's been a long time since uh, we did a podcast together how long has it been since the 1988 oscar a, a, a podcast well this is actually video cast excuse me video cast right so so it's well it's been at least a year since we've tried to reach out to you folks off screen i was going to say off paper since la dodger report is kind of like our um, our written version of opinion but yeah this is the first time that some of you folks yeah um so this will be uh, the start of our show here uh, where we talk dodgers for you know uh probably about several hours and bore everybody to tears now. <laughs> right um, it's called dodger filibuster welcome to dodger filibuster Right. So uh, we're planning on having uh, guests on the show and we'll talk Dodgers um, and um, hopefully, um, you know, we'll be able to uh, get some uh, interaction from from our readers and listeners uh, in later shows. And we're going to try and improve the format as best we can as we go. Um, So um, so here we are. Um, So welcome, everybody. And thanks for thanks for listening and tuning in. Um, so let's get let's get right to it. Let's talk some Dodger baseball. Um, so we are now through the first eight games of the season, and the Dodgers, yeah, put and your I hands over your eyes, Oscar. And I don't know what to think, man. We're one week into the season, and I just don't. You, you can go either way. You can be really optimistic with this group, or start out grumbling. Well, right? they're, yeah, they're 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 four and four through the first eight games, which could be worse. But the only the thing that concerns me the most is three of those four wins are against the lousy Padres. So you know, <laughs> we're not sure what to think. Of course, it's so early in the season that obviously we don't know anything yet. We don't know any, literally, well, too early. Know, although we know so little, we think we know enough to throw some opinions at you folks. Yeah, well, we know enough to do a show and bother everybody with our opinion. So, so uh, the Dodgers, of course, started off with uh, four games at home with the Padres, and then they're now currently on the road. They played uh, three in Colorado over last weekend, and then uh, they're now currently in Chicago playing the Cubs. Last night's game was a great game in terms of baseball. Uh Awful game in terms of being a Dodger fan. Um, the Dodgers lost uh, three to two. Um, the Cubs walked off in the ninth inning. Um, horror! It was, it was a horror. It was pretty show. pretty annoying for everybody, of course. And ESPN rejoiced in happiness and joy, um, you know, because their uh, two and a half three hour Cubs documentary was complete <laughs> with the win for the Cubs. Um, I'm sure they did a champagne toast up in the booth there. Um, how annoyed were you with, with that broadcast, Oscar, with the constant Cubs shtick and the interviews uh, interrupting the game? I mean, what, what, what did oh. you think about it? Well, thing? you know what? That's the worst. It doesn't really doesn't matter to me what team the Dodgers are playing, but whenever they're on ESPN, that really just grinds my gears, man. That whole mid-game interview in the dugout with somebody. I, th- I guess 
somebody told them that the fans love it and the fans want it. They must be getting some email telling them, keep up those grand interviews. But I'll tell you what, no, no, I, I'm really bothered by those things. But I got a question for you, Scott. Sweet, sweet for ESPN. All right. And maybe. I, I got a question for you about the Cubs Love Fest that ESPN put on yesterday. And, mm -hmm. you know, Twitter was blowing up about it as well. If you follow Dodger Twitter heads, you know, you can see everybody saying, oh, God, enough of this and enough uh, uh, with everything. Why don't you just go home and cook dinner for those Cubs? You love them so much. What, what I'm wondering is, do they, do they do that every year? Do you know, do they put that love fest out for every World Series champion? Or was it just, did they go totally overboard because it's this 100-year-old lifting of their drought. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, well, normally with ESPN, they, they normally just have the love fest for the Red Sox and the Yankees. Um, and you normally don't even see the Dodgers or the Cubs on ESPN because it's just, you know, Red Sox and Yankees every week. But uh, I think with this, I, I think it was, uh, they just kind of jumped on the bandwagon of, you know, the Cubs and their fans in the city of Chicago uh, shedding the 108 years of misery and losing that they've experienced uh, over the last century. Um, you know what? Was... Much love to them, man. Really. I mean, everybody should get a championship once. You know, once. Now I'm hoping it'll be another hundred years before those guys win. But, oh. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I got to give them a little bit. I got to give a little bit of love to the Cubs. You know, give them a little air time for winning. I give them no love. <laughs> no love. <laughs> This is how much love they get. Nothing. All right. All, right. All right. Well, we're clear on that. Let's get back to how much love we're going to give the Dodgers. Over those first two series that they had, you know, with Colorado and with San Diego, how much love are you giving to the Dodgers after that? Well, like I said before, it's really early, obviously. It's too early to really say anything one way or the other. Um, I, was, I will say this. I was impressed with the pitching. I think the pitching's going to be fine, um, but there's some problems that have popped up, and um, they're obviously what, what bothers me is that they're the same problems from last year that they never got fixed so far, at least. And like I said, it's only eight games, so it's hard to say. But the the two problems are the main weaknesses are lack of innings from starting rotation. The starters can't go past the fifth inning in any of the games. Good. Right okay. now, yeah, right now I'm feeling lucky if we complete four. And it seems like once you complete four innings with these guys, you're almost watching the clock now or watching the pitches and thinking, please, just finish one more inning. Yeah, you're like, you're like, oh, God, come on, you're almost through the fifth inning. And then, you know, right. there's there comes Roberts out. Nope, nope. You know, like like yesterday, in yesterday's game, Alex Wood, the first, what, two and a half, three innings, he looked great, he looked fine, he was getting everybody out, and then he hits the fourth inning, and boom, he hits the wall, okay, and and I'm like, oh, is he even going to make it to the fourth, and then Roberts, nope, here comes Stripling, bye-bye, and it's just like, what, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we can go on an individual start by start basis. I, I, I think, like with last night, I think the Cubs just figured him out, and maybe he lost a little bit of command. He lost some zip on his pitches. I don't, I don't know. But I mean, with the the star, all the starters not named Clayton Kershaw because we take Kershaw out of the equation, of course. All the non Kershaw starters. Maybe, maybe. Let's not forget, Kershaw didn't exactly have a grand outing in his last time on. That's true. That's true. But it's Kershaw, so you know we can we can give him a a, a mulligan on well, you know, first gets, field start. He gets yeah, a pass right. and so on, you know, of course. But uh, it was just a little bit troubling because that that guy that you want to fall back on suddenly looked too human. You know, he didn't come out weak, but they certainly got to him. Um, they did. Yeah. And well, I guess the flip side of that though is how much are our pitchers affected by offense that either scores double-digit runs or one? 
I'll get it. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a minute. We're going to get to the offense in a minute here because the offense is super, super annoying right now. I'm so irritated with the up and down offense. But All right, let's not jump. Okay, let's stick with the that, pitching. I, I want I want to stick with the pitching just for a minute here. The, the, the thing about the the thing about the starters not going past the fifth inning, and here's and we saw it last year where it came to bite the Dodgers in 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 the butt. Okay, the problem with that is you know it's okay for a little while, but what happens is if the bullpen has to pitch th- three, four, or more innings every single game, they're gonna get their arms are gonna get burnt out by August. And, I mean. And, that, and that's what happened with a lot of the a lot of the guys last year, and you know into October and into, into the NLCS, you know, and I, I think it's super super important getting innings from your starting rotation. You got to have innings, okay? It, it takes a burden off the bullpen, so they're not tired, you know, by the time you get to the end of the season. Oh, well, you and got it's, that right, yeah. And you it's know, like it's like, yeah, go ahead, Oscar. Well. Starting rotation can afford to have one guy, possibly two, that are uh, that they constantly fall into that. That are only going to give you four or five innings. You know, a rotation can survive that if they must. But we certainly that's not going to happen when four out of five of your starters are doing that. As yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it's like it's everybody except for Kershaw. And um, I mean, I don't know what the solution is to this. What I think it is is I think one of the things is the starters need to be a little more efficient. Like uh, they tend to sometimes at times pitch the contact a lot, or there's too many foul balls, you know. And I don't know what I don't know what the issue there. I mean, is it is it maybe poor pitch sequencing, or I I don't know. You know, it's hard to say. I mean, we see that a lot. lot. We see that constantly. Two strikes, we're seeing two strikes on batters, and they just get right off the hook. They can't drop that yeah. strike pitch. And it's not like they're walking a lot of guys or anything. It's just that they're just making too many pitches. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, we don't know what management's telling them. Of course, we don't know. We're not there. We're not, you know, sitting in the dugout next to Dave Roberts and, and Rick Honeycutt. But. Um, you know, I, I think maybe the pitch sequencing could be better. Um, you, know, who, you know, I don't know. Or, or, or maybe these guys, well, I can tell you this. I'm not surprised that Brandon McCarthy doesn't go five innings. Uh, I'm not surprised if Alex Wood doesn't go five innings, you know. But, I mean, like, they're not they're not bad pitchers, so it, it's... It, how I mean, how do, you, how, how do you stretch them out? How do you get them to go longer in games? You've got... I haven't got the answer for that either. And and you know what? Your guess is as good as mine with uh, pitch sequence. I'll I'll go for that. I know that uh, for the little bit that I know, uh, many times I'm sitting here at home and trying to call that third strike pitch, and they're sure not listening to me. You know, I see a completely different pitch on the, on TV. So you know what? I, I sometimes I think sometimes, and I, again, I don't know. I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but. Sometimes I think it's a lack of an ability to just challenge the hitters when you get two strikes. Like, challenge them, you know? Like, I mean, they got this stuff, obviously. I mean, like, you know, uh, Maeda and Hill and Wood. I mean, they're good, they're good pitchers. It's just like, hey, go after these guys. When you get two strikes on them, go after them. You know, I don't know. It seems sometimes like maybe they tend to nibble a little bit or yeah, they're trying to go hitters. It's just going to be one of those things that, you know, we got to really delve into the games, watch the games, watch pitch by pitch, and see how they do, compare it to other games, and, uh, you know, try to come up with a, you know, uh, come up with an explanation again. You know, I think probably the only the only people that can uh, answer that is, of course, Dave Roberts, Rick Honeycutt, and the pitchers themselves, you right. know. Speaking but, of pitchers um, themselves, and what about Hill? I've heard you mention his name a couple of times. Holy cow, we've already oh, lost Oh, blister him. man, yeah. blister boy. Yeah. Uh, he's he's well, he's got a blister again, and he's currently on the disabled list. He made one start, went five innings, but he pitched well. I mean, he pitched well in that start. He, he won it exactly um, against San Diego, 
And then uh, immediately after, on the DL with the blister on his middle finger, I think it's the same one from last year. I, I mean, what, what, what's the solution here? What do we do? Do we send him to, like, an acupuncturist or some kind? Do we hip, hypnotize him? Try to, you know, you will, you will not get blisters anymore. You're... Right, right. <laughs> you, you know what I would do is I'd have him work out with those, those uh, uh, Shaolin Temple guys that have the big pots with scalding sand and just right. like drive his hand into that thing. Bam! Let's just, let's just kill that. That'll thing. eliminate any blister at all. Or just rub, rub a lot of castor oil or whatever it is. I, I don't know. I, I mean, what can you say? I mean, again, blisters. I mean, how long is he going to be out this time? Well, he supposedly he threw a bull, he's, or Did he already throw that bullpen session? I haven't I think he did. Possibly. He was supposed to throw a bullpen session. I think it's on Thursday, actually, if I remember correctly. Thursday, he throws a bullpen session to test the blister. Um, but I, I will say this. I, I, I got a blister on my hand the other day. Uh, I'm not a pitcher, um, so, of course, obviously. Um, I think I was just gripping my beer too tightly. Um, and uh, uh, I will tell you this. A, the blister really hurt. It hurt. And I'm not pitchy. So I can understand why it's, it, you know, obviously it's hard to grip the ball when you got this big old gnarly, bubbly blister. Yeah, and, at, yeah. Oh, yeah. and it takes time. There's really nothing that makes those things go away kind of, other than time, you know. And popping it. But then it just makes it hurt even more when you pop the blister, right? You ever done that yeah. before, right? You yeah. get a blister and you just, you're like, once. I screw it. I'm just going to pop it, you just know? Once. You know <laughs> and, once uh, enough to just say never again. Yeah. There was yeah. my major league pitching career once once it showed up. I knew yeah. it was done. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's <laughs> over, Oscar. Hey, yeah, done so, man. Uh, well, hopefully he'll get back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Ahead. Yeah, get well soon. He's on the 10-day DL, which is new this season, and we're hoping that he can just miss one start and come back yeah. quickly. But Ew. I don't see that happening, man. I just don't see it. I think it's going to be a couple of weeks, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but um, I, will say, I will say this, though. Um, obviously, the Dodger bullpen has been very, very good. Um, I'm super impressed with all of them. They've been even Chris, even Chris Hatcher has been has been effective. Um, all of them uh, have pitched excellently. So I mean, that's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a clap. That's right. Alex Dodger report excellent, clap. Excellent job to the bullpen. Um, of course, uh, 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 they blew it last night, but you know, obviously, well, they, you know, can't be perfect. You know, we'll, yeah, we'll huh. we'll call it a collective day, but once again, it's one of those. It's early. And I don't want to be those guys that, that panic on one at bat or one outing. Um, right. But I will say, uh, on the other hand, that I would feel a lot better if the next time we see Kenley Jansen, he doesn't get bopped around. Because his last two outings where we saw, you know, last night he lost, uh, he, he gave up that uh, winning run. You called it, as a matter of fact. You and I were talking on text last night during the game, and you called it. Dodgers will lose it in the ninth. Uh, and sure enough, he did. And if I'm not mistaken, the last time we saw Kenley come up, uh, they were getting some hits off him, and he... And he, he gave up a couple of runs in Colorado. Yeah. I'm were, not... I, you know what? I, honestly, I'm not too concerned about Kenley. I mean, he's the one guy that I just don't worry about. I, I think it's just, it's just early in the season. Yeah, you know, about it. And even even last night against the Cubs, I mean, what did they? They had one one good. What was it? They had one one solid hit off him, and that was it. And that was enough to win it because he came in with a runner on base. If you remember, he gave up the one hit. Mm-hmm. Romo was the one who gave up the uh, who allowed the guy to reach. Um, but um, overall, I've been I've been really impressed with the bullpen. Uh, I think we've got a really solid collection of arms in the pen. Uh, what, what do you think about Ross Stripling and uh, well and Alex Wood as long men? I mean, obviously Wood's in the rotation now only because Hill is on the DL. Yeah. But what did you think of of that? I'm impressed. I I I like the move. 
I think the right man made the starting rotation. So I'm I'm happy there. I'm looking for, you know, unfortunately Wood didn't give us a, a whole lot of innings last night, but I'm I'm holding confidence in him. Uh, Stripling's working well, as you say. The rest of the bullpen really has done very well. Avilan, he's he's just been lights out. Um, up until last night, Romo has been a very pleasant surprise. Uh, I have to admit that um, I wasn't, I didn't care too much about Romo coming over the Dodgers like a lot of people were feeling. Oh my God, what's a Giant doing on our team? We can't have a Giant. You know, there are some Giants that I wouldn't want anything to do with. But uh, the background on Romo and the, and the Dodger family and so on sold me real quick. Come on over, brother. Join the blue. We'll take you. But what I was little concerned with, though, was simply what was his performance going to be like. Romo was easy to hate as a Giant because he was so good for so long with the Giants. So, right. you know, you hated that guy. But last season... You know, he really slipped quite a bit. So, hence, he's not a giant any longer. They don't want him. Um, so I was a little worried about, would he come over here, and would he be the Romo that we saw in 2016? Uh, so far, so good. He had a really good spring, and he's playing well now. So I'm 100% behind him. Yeah, well, I think uh, as, as the season goes along, the, the giant stink will... Uh will be uh, uh will be washed off eventually It'll does be, it ever wear really, off. does it ever one uh well it depends if, if you play well in a dodger uniform it, it'll it'll go away but uh, <laughs> like if you're not like good Juan then Juan Uribe was able to, to, to completely shed it i think he was it took a couple of years though he, 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 you know it took a couple of years of him hitting like 195 and then finally <laughs> he ascended into greatness you're right went up to heaven. Right. I give... Um, my, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> I was, I was going to mention, I give full Dodger hood to Jeff Kent. You know, he's one that came over, and uh, I give him, you know, he came over, he played his ass off. He, You know, he had a different squad of Dodgers around him, so everything yeah, that he did, did didn't work out exactly right with the Dodgers. Uh, there were some guys on the team that didn't like his you know, let's win no-nonsense attitude, but man, he brought a bat, and he fielded he like nobody, you know, so, yeah. I, Kent, I, Kent, yeah Kent was a good player. I, I, I do feel sorry for him that he had to be around that 2005-90 loss team, um, you know, that stunk it up uh, all throughout that year, but, yeah, you know, he was, he was a good player, a good hitter, um, you know, I mean, one of the better second basemen the Dodgers ever had. Uh, I think whoa. over the last whoa, 15 years. Whoa, that's a big years, statement. Years, okay, so. all right. You know, over the last 15 well, years, mean, I'll go with you there. Yes. All right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, who well, else? Well, maybe Steve Sachs, right? Yeah. See, I'm not sure I would. Well, you have to include him. I guess just over longevity. But I'm not sure I'm going to give him that much love. I'll tell you what. Well, it, that's a great idea. Post Lopes era, post, post maybe yeah. Lopes post era. There hasn't been a lot of great second basemen for the Dodgers, unfortunately. There it's hasn't. Kind of been dry. Uh, the Keystone has been uh, without a key, so well, to speak. You know, I think you brought up a good idea for a future show, where we do something like uh, top Dodgers, maybe uh, post '88, since the last World Championship. And run through some of the top Dodgers uh, uh, position wise, but I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like I don't want to get too deep into that tonight, though. Let's like, we haven't even talked about the sticks. Let's talk about those yeah. Dodger bats and uh, how do you uh, feel? Yeah. How do you feel about what you're seeing out of that? Crashing bird. Um, <laughs> no, I mean it was up and down. Uh, I mean, obviously, the, again, another problem from last year that was it doesn't seem to have been addressed at all is the fact that they just cannot hit left-handed pitching. Um, of course, I mean, the Dodgers have now seen four four left-handers this year: uh, Clayton Richard, uh, rookie Kyle Freeland, uh, Tyler Anderson, and then last night John Lester. And in three of those four games, they scored one run or less. So that's pathetic. 
um, you know, especially, you know, Kyle Freeland. I mean, like, come on. They, they couldn't hit Kyle Freeland? Uh, a rookie? I mean, what, I, he's been pitching, what, like two years professionally, something like that? Like, major, it was, he was making his major league debut. He never pitched in the majors before, and they couldn't hit him. And uh, they did well against Tyler Anderson, though. They were able to, you know, what did they, they scored, what, like five runs off him. Um, but Richard shut him down at home. And then, of course, last night, Lester, I mean, they, you know, they got one off him. And then they scored a second run later off the Chicago bullpen. But, um, you know, again, overall, the offense didn't, didn't look good. I mean, obviously, Lester is one of the better pitchers in baseball. So, yeah, obviously probably not going to score many runs off him. But yeah. I mean, my thinking is this, and I've, I've seen this since last year, and I, you know, I've, I've written about it many times, is that the already lineups that they put out are just not very good. And the reason is because the lefty killers that they put in the lineup, are they're just not good hitters. They can't hit anybody, really. Lefties, righties, midlies, can't hit anybody. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about... You know, Kike Hernandez, Scott Van Slyke, um, uh, Franklin Gutierrez is just joined the club, so we're still the jury's still out of him. We don't know because we've only seen him play like you know what you know, a few yeah, games. Yeah, not but, much. He's had a couple of hits. My 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 theory is this: Look, it doesn't matter if there's a lefty or righty on the mound. You should put out your best hitters on the field regardless every game. You know, obviously, I know guys need days off. Of course, they need guys need rest. You know, hey, you're going to want to play a matchup, you know, here and there. If that's understandable. But you should always put your best lineup on the field, regardless. And you should put your best hitters on. When you take your best hitters out of the lineup for, you know, sub-200 hitting utility guys, that's why you don't score. Yeah. I mean, let the regulars hit against lefties. See what happens. See what they can do. Uh, yeah. Go two full weeks with a regular set lineup. The regulars. I'm talking about Jock, Grandall, Andrew Tolles in left field, um, you know, Seeger, Turner, Gonzo. Don't bench any of those guys, you know, unless they're hurt. You know, let them hit against lefties. See what they do. Okay? Just just give them a chance. You know, I think that they, they can hit lefties if, if given the opportunity. You know, people will come in and, and they'll They'll say, oh, well, Jock's only hitting, well, what is it, whatever, 190 in his career against lefties or whatever it is. And But it's like, that's such a, it, if you look at how many games he's had against lefties, it's a pretty small amount of games. I mean, it's like, how can he hit lefties if he never gets to play against lefties, really? Exactly right. Exactly right. And, I'm and not they, a big you know, fan of that. Dave Roberts was saying also, like, um, if, uh, like with Jock specifically, if it's a, what was it, if it's a fastball pitcher, a fastball southpaw, compared to a, an off-speed guy that he'd rather have him hit against, the, what is it, the fastball pitcher, because it plays more to his strength or whatever. But, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't think it really matters all that much. I mean, he's just got to get some reps against them, you know, and, as the rest of the guys do. And then they'll, I mean, I think they'll hit. I mean, like, see... Peter, Turner, Gonzo, they're all good hitters. They're, I mean, I think they can hit anybody, really. But, you know, when you when you sit them in favor of, like, Kike Hernandez and Scott Van Slyke, guys like that, then, yeah, you're not going to score a lot of runs. I mean, you talk about putting, in, like, four, at least four automatic outs in the lineup for a game. You know, something like that. Three, four, five. If you have automatic outs in the lineup, you're not going to score many punts. It's key. Don't put automatic outs in lineup. I mean, what, what do you what do you think? What do you think, Oscar? Am I am I am I crazy here? No, no, you're not wrong. I'm a big believer in uh, let the guys play. You know, let Jock play. Let them have their reps. Let them face the other hitters. Absolutely. I'm a big believer in Jock. I'm a big believer in Andrew Tolles. Uh, even if Tolles isn't hitting very well. He's a superior fielder to Gutierrez, in my opinion. I didn't watch Gutierrez play very much over his career because, you know, I just don't follow the American League or the teams that he's been playing for. So I don't know a lot about him. Um, but what I've seen in terms of his play for the Dodgers, give me Andrew Tolles. 
any time in the field over Gutierrez. Um, yeah. And I think Roberts has been in defense of Roberts and that platoon business. I, I think that this year Roberts has been a little more flexible in terms of loosening up on that. They, yeah, looked, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It looked like they were going to just automatically go to that platooning in game two when they sat Jock Peterson and Tolles in game two of the season. Opening yeah. day came out, everybody played really well, we hammered the heck out of the Padres. Game two came, Gutierrez is in, uh, I forget who played center field in, in place of Jock, it might have been Kike. Uh, it was Kike. Yeah, so, and they sat them right away and offense, you know, went, <laughs> but I would have loved to have, you know, I thought, oh crap, we're right back to that straight up platooning no matter what. Uh, it seems since then that uh, Roberts has loosened up a bit. He's given Jock more opportunities like you just talked about. I saw Tolls get some more opportunities in playing. Uh, I think one of the reasons why Tolls ended up getting himself sat down once again was because he just wasn't doing a very good job batting lead off. Uh, and I think he, yeah. he played himself out of batting lead off. I wrote about this before, I've called him you know, the second coming of um, Delino, Delino De Shields. Uh, oh, oh, no, no. Uh, I don't think he's that bad. Uh, well, he hasn't I don't, done think, it. I don't think anybody can be as bad as Delino De Out, <laughs> as I used to call him. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was bad. Exactly right, exactly right. And you didn't want him necessarily hitting leadoff. Uh, over the first week of, of uh, Tolls hitting leadoff, I think we were starting to see some of that, though. There was just a little bit too much lift in that ball. We were con constantly seeing just that fly out that dies before the warning track, and it just makes you pull your hair out what little bit yeah. you've got because your leadoff hitter is not supposed to be producing these weak fly balls, you know? I, 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 I think that uh, um, Jock, um, Jock's game, I mean, we, if we're just talking about Jock specifically here, Jock's game is basically home runs and walks. He's going to strike out a lot. Uh, that's just that's just the type of player he is. You take the goods with the bad with him, you know. That's right. We can accept that. But I, I did I, I did notice that he definitely improved from uh, 2015 to 2016, and he decreased his strikeouts. He improved his contact rate, um, and it just seems like he uh, you know his average came up a bit. Um, so I think he, he improved greatly, but you know you take the goods with him with, with the bads, and I don't think he's a leadoff hitter. Um, I think he's more of a, a, a middle of the order guy, you know, uh, you know due to the fact that he you know has trouble making contact. Um, but I think Tolls is probably the best guy to lead off, and uh, they're they're I mean most of the games they they've been using him as lead off. Foresight has let off too. I'm okay with Foresight leading off, although he doesn't get on base as much as uh, Jock does. Is what it seems. It seems like his, uh, his on base percentage is a, is a little bit lower um, because he's he's his plate discipline isn't as at, like like Jock's is. Like you know, Jock's like you know he's he's drawing like 60, 70 walks per year type of a you know type of a hitter. And four sites like you know he'll you know he'll get like 40, 50 blocks something like that. But um, I like I like tools at the leadoff spot the best. Um, but like I said, I'm okay with four sites there. Um, I think that. Yeah. Agreement. Yeah. I like him as a leadoff hitter. Don't get me wrong. I actually do think tools is the best idea for the Dodgers at leadoff. Just need to get him to, to discipline. Uh, that fly ball business a bit. He uh, he heard somebody suggest to Puig to, to hit the ball into the air, and I think uh, he thought that must apply to him as well. So let's just uh, hit some line drives, Tolls. Just just hit those. Yeah. Drives. You know, he line drives. Drives. I think you know, hit. maybe find the gaps here. Uh, gap 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 hitter. Yeah. That's fine by me. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. He definitely he runs the base as well. Um, you, you know what I'd like to talk a little bit about while we're on the offense here um, is the base running. Mm. 
You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Wait, is it uh, my turn to say Crash and Burn? Yeah, the, the, the base running hasn't been all that great. Um, I think that um, it could be better, um, especially taking the taking the extra bases, you know, going from first to third on a hit, um, going from second to home, you know, um, there are, you know, on, on, and then uh, a future episode, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the numbers here. There's actually a, a stat that measures that, how, how often a team goes from um, first to third on a hit or second to home. Um, it's a base running metric. Um, and the Dodgers, uh, the last few years have been very low. They actually improved a little bit last year. I think they were like 15th, 16th. I guess I, I have to take a look at it again, but um, the base running needs to get better for sure. And um, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, they can work with them a little bit on that. <laughs> um, and uh, no more two blondes or pickoffs would help, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Um, let you know. I, I want to get to another couple of segments. Yeah, you can tell that we haven't uh, had one of these long. Uh, we haven't had one of these uh, podcasts together, and that we just got a whole lot of pent up stuff to get out. And as you said, we could uh, go on and on and on, but we're. Um, I think we are going on and on. And we've got another couple of segments that we want to squeeze in. So, <laughs> right? Sure, sure. So, let's get to, um, we've got one, one couple of things that we want to do regularly whenever we have our show. Is we want to have, like, Dodger Heroes, Dodger Go, right? So, um, Bums. Heroes, Bums, Goats, however you want to go with it. But why don't you give me a, a Dodger Hero for our first couple of weeks? Uh... My hero for the first week of the season, um, I'm going to go with the SEO Puig. Um, he had a really great home stand. Three big home runs. Uh, so, um, three home runs against the Padres. He looked really good. Uh, made some great uh, defensive plays in right field as well. Um, so, I'm going to go with, uh, with the Puigger and the big bat that he carried against the Padres. That's, that's my Dodger player of the week. What's yours? Right on. Um, I was at the game when we hit two home runs, so that was really, really wonderful for me. I was really happy to see that. So who can argue with that, right? Um, I'm going to go um, a little bit outside the box here with the call for, the, for my Dodger hero for the, uh, the opening of the season is the 10th man, Pantone. 294. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. They are the Anton Dodger. Yeah, they Absolutely. are the Dodger heroes of the opening. Those, those, those guys are awesome. I want to I want to say thank you to those guys for coming out and supporting the Dodgers um, on the road like they do. And you heard how much noise they made. Um, they make the most noise. They're making more noise than the Cubs fans. The Cubs fans all went home. They couldn't take the cold, even though they live out there. Right, right. Okay, you know. But those guys, 294, man, they they were uh, they were repping Dodger Blue, and they do it all the time. And uh, uh, they're they're pretty they're pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like that. I hey, think. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say I think that. They're more valuable even than Puig, really. <laughs> Those guys. Well, so yeah. That's a big statement, but would it, but I'm not arguing against it because I, I yeah, they came up really big yesterday. Uh, cold night, Cubs night. They're flying their flag and blah blah blah. They had their all of their specialty, but we had. Dodger Blue Nation being represented. They were spread out throughout that stadium. Uh, a bunch of them, from what I could gather through Twitter, is that a bunch of them got sold out of the game, couldn't get in. And so a mob, 150 or so, went over to another building and they bought out a rooftop. They couldn't even fit everybody on that Thanks. rooftop. And they still had a bunch more Dodger folks inside the building that we didn't even see. But we could hear them. 
ESPN could hear them. And even better than that, as you said, important as we, even better than me and ESPN hearing them, is that you know the Dodgers on the field and in the dugout could hear them. They knew yeah, that they, the fans are there repping, they knew the fans are there backing them. You could hear the Let's Go Dodgers. It was just, yeah. they're the heroes, man. Yeah, and, 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 hey, if they can hit left-handers, uh, you know, we should, <laughs> the, the, the front office should give them a call. Right on. Uh, I, yeah, no, big big ups to Pantone 294. Those guys uh, those guys rock. Um, hope to see them out in the next road trip. I'm sure they're they're planning their next trip. Um, That's correct. Uh, yeah. Well, Scott, I'm, I'm thinking sooner or later L.A. Dodger report is going to have to jump on a Pantone and do a complete report and video oh, and know. so on right. from deep inside the bowels. All right, so moving from the ups to the bums. Who are the bums? Well, there were probably quite a few, but I'm going to choose one. My bum of the week is going to be, and I, I, mean, I hate to pick on the guy. You know, I, I kind of have a tendency to do it. Poor Kike. Um, just can't seem to catch a break. Uh, um, love to hate I, well, I, I don't. Okay. No, I don't hate him. I don't hate the guy. It's just you know he hit 190 last year. He's he's you know I, I mean 190. Leave last year behind. What's he done? Okay, for us okay. Lately? What's he done for us? This lately? year, this year he is a, a blistering one for seven, <laughs> um, with a couple of terrible plays at shortstop. Um, he's oh. had one hit, one hit so far. I know it's only been seven at bats. I know, but you know, it, Kike, you know, step your game up a little bit, please. And get a couple of hits. I, I don't, I don't want to have to do this again. With, uh, you know, right. you know, I don't want to. I mean, no, but I, I, I will make a promise to all of our readers and listeners. I will not choose TK every week for the bum of the week. I will not. Hope not. Yeah, I will right. not. Okay? I will. I will give him a break. Okay. Yeah. Right. What about What about you? Who's your Who's your bum of the week, Oscar? I've got. I've got. Once again, uh, just like I gave out the hero was a collective. My bum of the week is actually a collective again this time, and my bums are the Colorado Rocky base runners. Who, ah. yeah, who twice in uh, Injin Ryu's game almost, well, twice what they did was purposefully come into second base once while trying to steal second and once coming to second on a hit. They came into second base and pulled off plays that very easily could have hurt our players. And I'll, the very first time what happened was, uh, I can't remember his name, he's trying to steal second, and uh, Yasmani threw the ball down to Kike. Wow. Kike was playing short that day. And he threw down to Kike and the ball glanced off Kike's mid, and Kike somehow missed it, and the ball went into center field. The Rocky that was coming into second base came in spiking at first. The ball glanced off of Kike uh, and was gone. He no longer had it. And the Rocky starts getting up and he comes with a yeah. full form shivers into Kike. Blasts him back. Didn't even have the ball. Wasn't even involved in the play anymore at that point. And he comes in like Jackie Slater. Wham! Stick him out. <laughs> Now that would have been, I, that would have been, you know, your classic, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I don't know what that was. He wasn't trying to break up a double play. There was nothing that was going on there. But the second time <clears throat> later in the game, we did have this guy, I remember, because he's the, he's the Rocky with the big old beard, Blackman. Is his first name Charlie, I believe? Charlie Blackman. Yeah. So he yeah. comes in. Now he's trying to break up a double play on this one. He's on first. Whoever was at bats behind him hit the ball. He's running second base, and he's coming in and sliding. Forsythe is playing second, 
Forsyth's got the ball, so he can throw it <coughs> the first. And Blackman comes in and has to reach out into the base path and latches on to Forsyth's ankle and tries to give him an ankle sweep. Like, try to sweep his legs while Forsyth was in the air trying to throw to second. <laughs> Not in the dirty base, base running there. Completely dirty. You yeah. know, I get it. You know, I'm not for that stupid Chase Utley rule that they made where they changed the rules around. I think you ought to be able to come in and cleanly break up a double play. But when the guy's giving you the base path and you're reaching out and sweeping his ankles, you know, in football it's a penalty if you hit the guy that's up in the air. Cat, they, know, they, they, they. Yeah, they, they should have flagged him for unnecessary roughness, uh, 15-yarder there. Well, uh, he paid the toll. He paid the toll. Uh, Dave Roberts and the Dodgers in the dugout yeah. were, were quick on it. They went to the replay. They oh, reviewed. They, were. they saw that, that dirty play, and it turned into a double play, and that was it for, for the Rockies. But for them, twice in one game, playing dirty, as far as I'm concerned, bums of the week, Rockies. I like that. You know, can I change my answer, my bum of the week, real quick? Just real quick. Sure. It's not Kike. I'm sorry, Kike. Not Kike. My bum of the week is officially going to be my bums of the week, I should say. ESPN. <laughs> All right. For for basically ruining what was a you know a, a very a very good Dodgers Cubs game with their complete and total. Chicago bias throughout the whole game, and we, we saw we should do we talked about it earlier. Um, it was really annoying. Seriously, ESPN, can you, you know, cut, stop doing that? You know, cut it out. You know, the Dodgers were playing that night too, um, so. Uh, but it, that that's it. My bum, my bummer bums of the week, ESPN. Okay, so. Um, we pretty much uh, reached the end of the show here. Um, what we're going to do um, normally at the end of every show is a, a beer review. Um, Oscar, what kind of uh, tasty brew do you have over there that you're going to uh, to review? Right. Um, like Scott said, we thought something nice that we would bring you folks just a little bit extra and just bring you a little bit of uh, beer because we love beer ourselves, Scott and I. We know that there's a lot of you out there that enjoy good craft beers. What I'm uh, bringing up first today is five beans. Can you see this here? This is five beans. Five beans. Mm. Five beans from Six Point. Now, an interesting little bit about this beer is uh, I got this beer in a trade with a buddy of mine that it lives in West Virginia. And I sent some beer out to him from here in California, and he sent some beers out to me uh, from his neck of the woods. He sent me some things that I can't get out here in uh, California, and I did the same for him. Five Beans is actually a beer that you can find out here, which is why I thought I would start off with this, in case you're interested. Five Beans, as you might guess, is a coffee coffee tasting beer oh now, really yeah, oh yeah. Wow. now when I first got into craft beer I hated dark beers I hated coffee beers and anything like that but I've come to appreciate them I've come to love them and so here we go we're going to try five beans here you can see how dark it is right it's very dark. It looks mm. it looks delicious, and it looks like it'll keep you up all night. Uh, uh, it's it, it is delicious. As a matter of fact, Scott, if um if you're any kind of a coffee beer aficionado, then this is going to be right up your alley. It's not too sweet, and it's definitely got that coffee and cocoa cacao kind of feeling happening. So. I love it. It's great. Uh, it looks good. I'm more of a dark, uh, dark lager man myself, but I would definitely enjoy um, a Five Beans beer. Go Five Beans. Uh, 
And uh, as an extra little uh, tidbit there, it's 10% uh, ABV, so do be careful. It's a little high in the alcohol. It's a, it's a stronger beer. Yep. It's definitely a stronger beer. Add that at the end of Dodger, LA Dodger Report. Don't have it at the beginning. Or save, yeah, or, or save it uh, for when the Dodgers blow a game and you, you just you just want to get sauced and forget about it. Or when they win and you want to celebrate, you know, we get to walk right. off or something, right. first shot, throws a shout out, Dodgers knock one down, down knock right. two down. Right. All um, right. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, that's about it for uh, the first show here this week. Um, so uh, the Dodgers are off today. Um, it's a weird little uh, off day in between, in the middle of the series. I don't know. The schedule is weird. Um, tomorrow, the Dodgers play uh, the Cubs again at 5 o'clock or 5 or 5 p.m. Brandon McCarthy will take on uh, John Lackey. Thankfully, uh, Lackey is a right-hander, so uh, you know. Hopefully, we'll see some runs scored uh, tomorrow night. Um, that's right. Uh, as for us, we will be back um, in a couple of weeks with the next uh, with the next show. Um, we're planning on doing some uh, really fun stuff. We'll have guests on the show, uh, fellow bloggers, talking Dodgers, uh, fellow writers. Um, we'll be uh, trying out new beers um and uh we'll have some new segments for you guys so uh you know stick around um thanks again for uh listening and watching to us um i'm scott andes um with oscar martinez from la dodge report you can find us at ladodgereport.com and you can also follow us on twitter at at la dodge report um you can follow Oscar at his uh, personal Twitter, um, OM Sports 42. Um, and uh, Oscar, uh, you have a, a, a collectible site, right? Why don't you shout out the URL yeah. to that? Cool. Thanks for, yeah. Uh, b before I do that, really quickly, uh, yeah, also, thanks everybody for listening to us. Uh, and um, be sure to, uh, if you're um, watching us on YouTube, feel free, give us a comment, you know, we want to hear what you think, bear with us that, uh, indulge us, it's our first time trying this, and we look to only get better and improve, but otherwise, what we want to do is give you some, uh, quality Dodger listening, uh, some good opinions, and some entertaining Dodger talk, so, Dodger uh, discussion, yeah, exactly, um, Scott mentioned that, yeah, I, my hobby is baseball card collecting, and so I run also a baseball card blog on the side, which is all trade bait all the time, dot com. Look me up, all trade bait all the time. And uh, thanks for joining us once again, and we'll see you folks next time. Thanks, guys. Go Dodgers. Right. Bye. This is your chance,